around 23 Italy time. Yeah. And that's when shit really changed, yeah. right? Yeah, shit got real, real fast. Like overnight. Like literally it was one of those overnight things. Um, and so I did a TV commercial because I thought, I thought it was my last year of modeling. I thought, that's it. <clears throat> Why did you think that? Because I was 23. Oh, and that's old, and I was, right? <laughs> in that, in that so industry. Ancient. Far out. <laughs> You're pretty, yeah, you're getting into your twilight years of modelling at 23. Is that really, is that the, the older end? Back then it really was. Wow, man, that's so It's like long. mid, if you, it, well, not so much the older end, you can't work, but it's kind of like if you haven't really made it significantly by then, right? the chances of it happening after are pretty low. Okay. You can still work. Yeah. It'll be probably just stock standard, pretty mediocre, yeah. Stuff. Okay. Um, but not of that level that you want to get to ultimately. Yeah. Right. So I thought, all right, if this is my last year, I've got to try and get some coin in the bank because right. I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards. Yeah. And so I hadn't really tackled the whole TV commercial world of, of modeling. And so I thought, I'm going to push for that. And I sat down with the agency and I said, I really want to try and get some TV commercials under my belt. So I can save up some money. Maybe I'll go to Germany and model there because they were interested in having me over there. But I thought at least I'll have some money in the bank and I can decide what I'm going to do. So I started this year of trying to lock down some TV commercials. And I, I you know, by January, February, I'd done a couple here right. um, locally. So I thought this is great. And then I got um, asked to go to a casting for an Italian TV commercial. So I went along to that. Had no idea who it was for, but I just thought, just want to get another one, just another, another TV commercial under my belt. Ended up getting the job, mm. thinking I'll never see this thing, it'll air overseas, it was a ph for a phone company. And then I think a couple of weeks after it aired, um, the client called my agent and said, we want to fly Megan over to Italy because this commercial's just been a huge success and we want to have her over there for a week of media and we're going to throw her a party. And wow. I know, it was crazy. How does that even come from a commercial? I don't know. That's the thing. It's not normal. No, because I think of the commercials a... on ours. I'm like, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not probably going to attend a, the party for the lady on the phone commercial. No, you know exactly, I mean? exactly. Weird. But I think <laughs> this was no ordinary phone commercial Wasn't it? though. No, no, it was, um, You'll have to find it. Yeah, I'm going to find it. Down. it. But it was very sultry and I was kind of like a Bond girl. And you think, okay, how right. How does that connect with phones? And it kind of did. It right. is, you know, Italy can, you know, they could get away with a lot creatively. But um, yeah, it, it just it was something that just exploded and it changed my career and my life. Yeah. Because mm. you went from back here doing what you would, you know, flying to pay bills, yep. flying back and forth to over there yep. to being people literally lining up like the whole country to see you. It was, um, it was a very extreme, well, and it's still back in Australia. It's not like, well, then that changed for me back in Australia. I was right. still, it was a really bizarre double life for a while because I would fly over there and just have the full rock star treatment. Yeah, like bodyguards. Everyone and... knew who I was. Yeah, the whole lot. Wow. But then I'd come back to Australia and it would be like crickets. Yeah, right. In terms of work, in terms of, I mean, I loved it because because it happened so quickly, it's kind of spooked me a bit. Yeah, because would, you go yeah. from struggling to get a client to book you for a job mm. to a whole country just embracing you and... Wow paps following you and having bodyguards and all that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. And then um, it, that was really hard to adjust to because it was so extreme and it was so quick and no one teaches you how to deal with it. No. By myself in a country where I didn't understand what they were saying, um, all sorts of dodgy people around me trying to sign all different yeah. things. And, you know, you just had to have your wits about you. So that was really hard to get my head around. But it, so it was kind of nice to come back to Australia and have the anonymity just be normal. and yeah. just have the normality because I'd be going over there and just it would be crazy. Yeah. See, that would I'd go over there and get drunk on the power of no. fucking everyone loves me. No, I would just freak me I out. would move there in a heartbeat. No, I see. And I didn't. I didn't for a while. It freaked me out. It freaked me out because everyone wanted a piece of me and I didn't yeah. understand and I didn't. You know, you get your people trying to sign you up for different contracts and you don't understand the language and you're having to yeah. try and get it translated. And, you know, I got taken advantage of a fair bit.